Welcome back to Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you so much for staying with us this morning. And if you are just rolling around the house now, getting up and getting your bearings, don't worry, today's yours. And I'm sure you're going to achieve every single thing that you set out. We are still working from home. Uh, to those working at home, I do not envy you. I think it's now work-life blend, not work-life balance. The days that I am working at home, I feel I cannot even move from my chair. But uh, we will discuss that a little later. But on a more serious note, we continue to look at the analysis of the Prime Minister's announcements over the weekend a phase reopening and the prime minister said that his decisions are backed by science and medicine even in the great u.s of a where the unemployment rate spiked at 15 percent the president is is is, is having a very difficult time balancing the needs of the health sector and the needs of the medical profession and taking the advice and also his desire to reopen the economy uh, looking at what many fear to be a worst uh, second phase now here locally, we see that stakeholders are coming forward to say their thoughts. Uh, some said that a less conservative approach should have been used. The small and micro enterprises are still concerned that not enough is being given to them to support them during this process. Now, the Trinidad and Tobago Coalition of Services Industry, we last spoke with President Lara Quintrell Thomas uh, on our Wednesday night show, speaking about the findings of one of the surveys that they conducted with the TTMA. And what they saw was as the deleterious effect of the impact impact of the lockdown and how people were fearful of not just how this was being handled but the reopening process some major highlights coming out of that now fast forward to where we are the prime minister made his announcements are uh, they satisfied well, yesterday they released a strongly worded statement talking about uh, their thoughts on it services contribute to about 60 percent of gdp also looking at the fact that almost 600,000 persons are employed in the services sector yeah they felt as though some of the services industries have been negatively impacted and were not considered and they are now looking to the economic recovery committee joining us uh, to expand a little bit more on this lara quinchel thomas the president of the ttcsi lara good morning how are you good morning i'm very well and i am also never losing hope Today is another day to not lose hope. I love that. Thank you for starting the day with that. I think we must always remember that, you know, that in spite of everything we're seeing, we still see specks of, of light coming out of the darkness. But I could not agree more. You know, speaking about specks of light, uh, TTCSI issued a strongly worded release yesterday. Is it that you saw no light or no specks of light on what took place on Saturday? Well, I, I don't think there was absolutely no light at all. And I think it's important to commend the government, first of all, for their approach to this entire exercise. They certainly have been consulting. They've taken a measured approach. As you indicated, they are referring to the medical science. They're listening to the experts. But where we felt there are some very clear gaps is really in treating with the services sector, as we have said. It was interesting to note that in the phased reopening plan that the prime minister laid out on Saturday, you know, they spoke to manufacturing, they spoke to doubles vendors, and yet a whole entire sector of our, our working population was completely left out. And many of those are very low risk. And I think that's really where we feel that more attention needs to be paid. Certainly, we understand that some sectors, tourism being an obvious and, and perhaps large example, the creative sector are going to need some special focus and special attention paid. But there are literally hundreds of thousands of employees, business owners in the services sector that are just completely not on this roadmap. Now, I'd like to give the Prime Minister and the government the benefit of the doubt and think perhaps that maybe we're in there somewhere and it just was not articulated. But we really do not have any clarity around what phase would you, for example, include professional services, accounting firms, law firms, um, architects, engineers, consultants, recruitment agencies? Where are we in this reopening? Most of those types of professional service firms are very low, low risk, low, um, low hazard. And so we, we were not mentioned. Um, I know there is concern in the sort of health and wellness sector in terms of barber shops and nail salons and so on. But whilst we consider them non-essential we do um, we do really want to stress the point that these are people's livelihoods and there are jobs attached so we were hoping to see perhaps in phase three a, a proper plan for how we could reopen these small types of small business 
So, so, so yeah. just, just a clarity, your issue is not with the approach, the phased approach. You, because I was going to ask, is the government has made it clear that this is all not cast in stone, that they are going to constantly be uh, reviewing the advice from medical professionals. They'll be looking at the data. Uh, the Prime Minister says he's hopefully optimistic. He does not, he hopes that that is not misplaced. Um, and I was going to ask if, it, if you do not agree with that approach, the, the phased reopening and the advice from the medical professionals. No, I, I think the phased approach is the smart one and the, I mean, although if you look at it the phases are fairly short mm -hmm. so I'm not clear what's going to happen in terms of risk mitigation strategies and guidelines and economic stimulus what are some of the things that the government's going to put in place to get us from phase one to phase two to phase three our concern though really is more that so many businesses were excluded from every single phase we're not mentioned at all they're not on there so the phased approach I have no issue with, and we're comfortable with the government taking it one step at a time. It's really the fact that so many businesses were omitted entirely. And so we don't know, are we you know, there with the, the malls and the beaches, or are we there with the cinemas? There's really a lot of lack of clarity. But the actual approach itself, I, I don't think there's any real concern. Once we understand how we move from one phase to the other in terms of as I said, economic stimulus, risk mitigation, um, availability of PPE and training, those sorts of things. Now, you, you called on the Economic Recovery Committee. In fact, it, it was stated in the last line of your release. What are you hoping to hear from them? Because a lot of business owners, because what I'm getting from you, it is just the lack of clarity. Like, tell me what is happening. So what, yeah. what are you hoping to hear from the Economic Recovery Committee? Well, actually, we did yesterday consult with them because like many of the uh, BSOs, we have had connections to various of the subcommittees that have been put together under the National Economic Recovery Committee. So yesterday, we did have a consultation with the Services Sector Subcommittee. We went through um, each of the different professional groups and we were able to identify what we consider low, medium and high risk in terms particularly of the spread of physical distancing and some of the other mitigation factors that have to be put in place. And so we were able to then give that feedback to them and then help them to understand where we felt each category, each group of services firms could fall in what phase. So what we're trying to do is to guide the, the Economic Recovery Committee, which hopefully then by extension will advise the Prime Minister and, and the government, that in listing all of the different services sector businesses, this is where we feel they fall in this is where we see that they're assessing the level of risk that they may have and some of the measures that we hope the government would consider to support their reopening because understand that people who run a small business it's not just the employees that they may have had to let go or set at home it's also they have no revenue yeah so we really need to get small businesses micro businesses you know one man and one employee one lady and two hairdressers you know, back out to work safely, proper guidelines, as we've been saying. But we can't, they're, they're not mentioned in any way. We don't know where they fall in this schedule. But and and that, that's really, I think, the real pain is being felt at that end of the stick. You know, you talk about the stimulus package, and the government has given over four, well, just 400 million alone in a salary grant, uh, and millions of, uh, you know, in terms of food cards, food grants, the food assistance program. Is it that none of these persons were able to access the loss of income funds made available through the stimulus package? Well, as far as I know, a number of people, I mean, my own organization, we've been helping some staff to access the salary relief grant. But we're really looking at it from the business owner point of view rather than the employee point of view, the social. I appreciate that the government has done quite a bit in terms of social support and, as you say, the food hampers and food cards and so on. But what we really need to do is get people back to get their businesses open. So what is, we haven't heard anything about what the government is proposing for economic stimulus for business owners, for employers, to be able to open the doors of their business again, whether it's relief on tax payments, whether it's incentives for rehiring staff, you know, what are some of the economic stimulus ideas, concepts? We've heard nothing other than handouts for persons who've lost their jobs. Right. And I do appreciate that's important, but what we need now is to, is to re-energize and revitalize small businesses, medium-sized firms, to get them to open their doors again. 
Larry, you know, and I look at, I, I asked Cara Nunes to share about that yesterday because in the U.S. you have government-backed loans, you have a number yeah. of stim, you have s small loans for businesses um, that were, they were rolled up. But she said the, f the fiscal leeway that the government has is simply not enough because we know what's happening with the deficit. It's expanding. The government simply does not have that kind of money anymore to maybe do what we what we what is comparative to, to the United States. So when you talk about a stimulus package, give me two things that you think the government can do without negatively impacting the future of this country with further debt. Right, so just to be very clear, and I had said this the last time I was on your show, we're not necessarily asking the government to give anybody money, any business owners money. What we are asking for is relief in terms of waiving penalties on late tax payments, um, providing a, a brief window of tax amnesty perhaps on business levy and green fund. So just to ease the financial burden on small business, we're not asking the government to give us any right. fiscal incentives, but to maybe to build a package of economic stimulus that encourages us to reopen some, some temporary uh, deferment or amnesty on tax payments, incentives, tax incentives to encourage you to reopen, um, to begin exporting and so on. So it's not a question of putting money out, mm -hmm. but it's a question of helping us to not have to put too much money out at the same time. You know, in the United States, which where we see unemployment has gone to a peak of 15%, yeah, after, after, yeah, after, the, after the Donald Trump administration taking politics aside, you, you've seen where the U.S. stock market was. Uh, they were doing relatively well. The U.S. economy was going to, let me not use this cliche, making America great again. Um, but even now, as businesses and states are battling with this balance of health versus economics, um, there is a pu public health experts are warning that the a return to pre-virus norms and a return and a reopening too soon can see a second wave which can be even worse and with the flu season imminent and expected to happen uh, very soon you know, you know if the prime minister comes and says let's say in the next month the next six weeks is is that what you're hoping to hear I think it's very important that we are mindful of the context. So our economy was struggling even before COVID-19, as we all know, with the, the fall in oil prices. So we were not in the same situation as the United States. So businesses have been struggling, and then you put this on top of it. And of course, we're going into hurricane season, which has ramifications throughout the region. The fall in tourism, which is going to be really felt for a long period of time. You know, all of these things, I think, converging to make this a very challenging time for most of the Caribbean, and I think Trinidad is no exception to that. So I, we're very mindful of the context, and we don't want to be unreasonable. We're not asking for massive bailouts or anything like that. And I also hear you about not rushing back to work, and then we have a second wave, mm -hmm. and then, you know, hundreds more people die, and we have that. That is not also what we're suggesting. And we've been very clear in saying that we would like the government and the experts to provide guidance and training to small business owners to enable them to reopen safely, practice physical distancing and so on. And very interesting, you know, yesterday, and you mentioned it earlier, that Doubles and, and KFC were reopened. And we saw pictures of, you know, 50, 60 people yeah. all yeah. piled up together by the Doubles van, only a couple of them wearing masks. So how is that safe? I mean, I understand the need to get the doubles guy back to work. He's got to pay his bills too. But what are we doing to make sure it's done safely? So it feels in a way a, a bit like, um, you know, the balance is not even. If I am running a small accounting firm with five or six employees, I can probably be far safer because I have fewer visitors. I'm not dealing with the public in that same way than a doubles vendor. Yeah. Uh, we're, you know, there, there seems to be some disparity. Well, there is some disparity in our opinion. And so I think perhaps highlighting the businesses that can be safely reopened, let them go first, and then have training and proper support and stimulus for those who may take a little longer. But it's really to almost drill down every single sector. Here's where you are, here's where your risk is, here's what we can do, and this is then a, a date for you to be reopened. We, we want a sense of a plan. No, I know. And not just a dozen things randomly in a, in a phased approach. Before we wrap this, let me get this. I know we have about a minute again. You said yesterday you met with the recovery committee. Um, are you confident that this recovery committee is really the light that we talk about uh, to the end of the tunnel or to this, or to, to, to uh, I, I guess, a less harmful or less, I guess, uncomfortable new normal? 
Yeah, well, I'm, I'm very confident in the sense that the people who have been appointed to this committee, you know, I'm sure you've spoken with many of them over the last few weeks, are very competent. They have been very open to taking feedback from various groups, including the TTCSI. They have welcomed and invited us to be part of the conversation, which was really a concern that we had at the very beginning. Uh, as you know, we had concerns about the lack of women on the committee, the lack of CSOs. But overall, I think the committee has handled it very well. I know that they've got some very solid recommendations. The challenge is whether the government listens and implements. And, and I, I think that may be where, if a disconnect happens, that might be where it actually happens. But I think from what I've seen and the people I've talked to, the committee actually has got some pretty, they're, they're smart, they know what they're doing, and they've got some pretty solid recommendations. So now it's for the government to actually implement. Laura, I do want to thank you very much for uh, speaking to us in your capacity as president of the TTCSI. And like you, uh, we are not losing hope. Hopefully we can all get out of this better and uh, to see a new day with a new normal. Thank Indeed. you so much. Have a wonderful My day. My pleasure. Thank you all. We take a short break. When we come back, we continue to analyze what the Prime Minister had to say. And also, cyber security, online activity is on the rise. But do you know that now that you're doing all of these Zoom meetings, you might be putting your personal data at risk? Stay with us. There's so much to discuss this morning.